Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. We're going to start out with video L on the blood vessels by focusing on how blood pressure is actually regulated. We earlier looked at various factors that impact blood pressure, but how can those factors be changed with the help of the nervous system? So we'll look at neural mechanisms with the help of um, hormones and with the help of the kidneys, so renal mechanisms. This video will focus on the neural mechanisms. The neural mechanisms are going to adjust blood pressure by adjusting peripheral resistance by in turn adjusting blood vessel diameter. Remember that by means of vasoconstriction or vasodilation we can have a real impact on peripheral resistance which in turn impacts blood pressure. And by doing this our nervous system can really adjust how much blood is going to be sent to specific uh, tissues to specific organs. Now there are two major reflex arcs to mention that, and these reflex arcs depend on two types of sensory receptors. They are the baroreceptors. Baroreceptors are receptors that detect changes in pressure, blood pressure in particular, as well as stretch in the blood vessels and chemoreceptors that detect changes in the chemistry of the blood particularly the pH and gas levels. Now, we're going to focus more on the chemo re receptors, <clears throat> excuse me, and their influence on blood vessel diameter and therefore blood pressure when we get to the respiratory system. We're going to just focus on the baroreceptors. Once we understand them, it'll also be easier to understand the chemo receptors in the respiratory system. As part of the neural mechanisms that influence our blood pressure, we can't not mention our higher brain centers, particularly the cortex that is the cerebral cortex and the hypothalamus, which can override a lot of the uh, reflex arcs we're about to, to discuss. They particularly can kick in during um, very stressful situations where we feel like we need to fight to save our lives or flee. Uh, exercising and as I and they can actually impact the medullary centers um, directly. So where are these sensory receptors, baroreceptors and chemoreceptors primarily located? Well they're located in um, areas of our carotid arteries, the, the arch of the aorta and some of the larger arteries of the neck and the thorax. We sometimes refer to them, these locations, as sinuses. So the carotid sinuses um, would be a good example for a location of the barrow and chemoreceptors. So depending on which group of receptors we're talking about, uh, we might be talking about the aortic reflex, which is of course going to be influencing systemic blood pressure, except for anything that goes to the brain that depends primarily on the baroreceptors located in the carotid sinuses, so we call that the carotid reflex. What's interesting is that there's a bit of a debate on how effective these baroreceptors are when a person suffers from chronic high blood pressure, hypertension that is. There's some thought that these baroreceptors can reset themselves and therefore become less sensitive to an elevated blood pressure. In order to understand these reflex arcs that involve the baroreceptors and even the chemoreceptors, we're going to have to add one more center. And this is a center that influences the blood vessels, not the heart, but the blood vessels. And because of that, we call it the vasomotor center, also located in the medulla together with the cardiac centers. So we have the two cardiac centers. Remember the cardioacceleratory and the cardioinhibitory. Now we're adding a center that controls the motor activities, that is vasoconstriction and vasodilation of our vessels. And the kinds of fibers that are controlled by the vasomotor center are 
only sympathetic fibers. Please try to remember that your blood vessels are not characterized by dual innervation like the heart is. Vessels are only innervated by sympathetic fibers. Your heart is characterized by dual innervation. It receives both sympathetic as well as parasympathetic fibers. Now, when we add this vasomotor center to the two cardio cardiac centers, we collectively refer to all three of them as the cardiovascular center. So let's take a look now at how this vasomotor center actually functions, and let's just have a general viewpoint first. Remember your vasomotor center is going to return blood pressure to homeostatic levels with the help of your aortic and carotid reflex. So therefore, let's say that the blood pressure, systemic arterial blood pressure begins to drop in your body. What's the vasomotor center going to do? It's going to try to bring it back up. And how can it do that? Well, we're going to change the diameter of our blood vessels, right? If we cause some vasoconstriction, that's going to increase peripheral resistance, and therefore we're bringing the blood pressure back up. Just the opposite for if blood pressure is rising. If blood pressure is rising, our vasomotor center is going to do something that prevents vasoconstriction. We're going to allow our vessels to just stay more relaxed, not as constricted, not as tight, not as much tone. And if we do that, we're having less peripheral resistance, blood pressure drops, we're back to um, homeostatic levels for blood pressure. So that's sort of a summary of this text slide. Now let's go and let's go into more detail in how this all works because it's a little, it's not as intuitive as it seems. So let's say we start out with a dropping systemic arterial uh, blood pressure. Remember, what is our ultimate goal? We want to bring it back up, right? I like to do these flow charts because this is a text version really of a flow chart almost backwards. So blood pressure drops. I want the, to bring the blood pressure back up. How can I do that? Let's vasoconstrict. And how can the vasomotor center help with that? Well, it can trigger its sympathetic motor fibers to secrete norepinephrine onto the heart. I, I'm sorry, onto the blood vessels. We're talking about blood vessels at this point in time. One more time, blood vessels are only innervated by sympathetic motor fibers. Great. Where do these sympathetic fibers come from? Spinal cord only. Remember, there aren't any sympathetic fibers that arise from the brain stem. All sympathetic fibers arise from the spinal cord. And how are they triggered to release? To, how are they triggered by the spinal cord? Well, we need to have interneurons coming down from the vasomotor center in the brain. And so that means that our vasomotor center should have been stimulated. So see here the lack of intuitive reasoning. If blood pressure drops and the vessels are not stretched and therefore our baroreceptors do not fire, that actually tells our vasomotor center to become stimulated and alerted such that our sympathetic fibers secrete norepinephrine and we bring the blood pressure back up. On the other hand, if blood pressure rises, remember we want to bring it back down by not vasoconstricting, which is another way of saying vasodilating. If we're not vasoconstricting, we're not squeezing the vessels so they're staying more in a vasodilated state. And that means we do not want those sympathetic fibers to kick in. We do not want the vasomotor to be stimulated to where the sympathetic fibers would kick in. So we see that the vasomotor center is inhibited and the sympathetic fibers therefore inhibited. So an increase in blood pressure does cause our baroreceptors to fire so that the vasomotor center is not stimulated. So with the help of this flow chart, we can now take a look at how the three cardiovascular centers are going to control or regulate blood pressure. So let's start with what we just reviewed on the previous slide. So let's say that our blood pressure is decreasing. 
Remember, ultimately, we want to bring our blood pressure back up to reach homeostatic conditions. So the way we can bring our blood pressure back up is by means of vasoconstriction, which means that we need to uh, activate the sympathetic fibers. How does that work? By activating our vasomotor center. And how do we activate our vasomotor center? By allowing our baroreceptors to not fire. As a matter of fact, when blood pressure decreases, we have um, less pressure, less stretch of the vessels. And if we see less stretch on the vessels, we see that the baroreceptors decrease their firing. On the other hand, if blood pressure is increasing, that's going to stretch the blood vessel walls and that fires that causes the firing of the baroreceptors. Action potentials fly up the sensory neurons to the vasomotor center and the vasomotor center is actually inhibited such that we are going to not see vasoconstriction instead of instead we see more vasodilation relaxation of the vessels blood pressure drops we're back to homeostatic conditions now we can add our cardiac centers because don't forget that blood pressure equals cardiac output multiplied by peripheral resistance what we focused on so far with the help of our vasomotor center is peripheral resistance. Cardiac output, remember, is primarily controlled with the help of our cardiac centers, the cardioinhibitory and cardioacceleratory center. They can affect uh, contractility and stroke volume and therefore ultimately impact cardiac output and therefore blood pressure. So let's take a look at this. So let's start with the bottom scenario one more time. So let's say that blood pressure is dropping. So blood pressure is dropping. How can we adjust cardiac output? We're not looking at peripheral resistance for now, but let's say we're looking at cardiac output. If blood pressure drops, how can we make sure that uh, our blood pressure is going to return to homeostatic levels? Well, we could increase cardiac output, correct? And there are different ways of doing that. So if blood pressure drops, this time the baroreceptors are going to stimulate the cardioacceleratory center with the help of its sympathetic fibers. It can increase contractility and heart rate and therefore increase cardiac output, which leads to increased blood pressure. So that's the cardioacceleratory center. But we also see that at the same time we're going to inhibit the cardioinhibitory center such that those parasympathetic fibers will not dump acetylcholine onto the heart and not slow down the heart rate. And so then we see that the heart rate will go up some, again, adjusting our blood pressure. So you have to think carefully through how these cardiac centers are impacted. Let's do this again with the top uh, scenario here. Let's say we have an increased blood pressure or our blood pressure is increasing. Remember, our goal is now to bring it down and we need to focus on cardiac output. So if blood pressure is going up, then we are going to have to somehow bring our cardiac output down in an attempt to bring the, the blood pressure down. So what happens is that because of increased blood pressure, the increased firing of the baroreceptors will communicate to our to cardiac centers as follows. If our baroreceptors are firing due to increased blood pressure, we're going to want to bring the blood pressure down. So we want those parasympathetic fibers to now dump acetylcholine onto the heart. So we see an increase or an excitation or stimulation of our cardioinhibitory center such that the parasympathetic fibers will dump acetylcholine onto the heart, lowering the heart rate, which of course lowers cardiac output. At the same time, we do not want that cardioacceleratory center be to be stimulated because we do not want sympathetic fibers to increase heart rate. We do not want sympathetic fibers to increase contractility, which increases stroke volume. We want to inhibit the cardioacceleratory center which is going to prevent the sympathetic fibers from releasing norepinephrine onto the heart 
and um, affect heart rate and, and contractility. And that, of course, all influences cardiac output. As you can see, the actions, the responses of these cardiac centers uh, to blood pressure changes requires quite a bit of critical thinking. You really, really must practice this whole flow chart the way um, I discussed it with you. The way these cardiac centers, particularly your cardio acceleratory and inhibitory centers, respond is at first counterintuitive to you. So be careful. Practice this. Always, in my opinion, the best thing to do is to ask yourself, what is the trigger for um, the blood pressure? Is there an increase in blood pressure or decrease in blood pressure? If you start there with this, then you also know what the ultimate response should be, either a drop or an increase in blood pressure. And you can work backwards from there much easier towards the vasomotor center and ultimately your two cardiac centers. Remember too that what triggers the firing of the baroreceptors is the stretching of the vessel. So when we have an increase in blood pressure and the vessel walls are stretched, the stretch receptors detect that stretch and respond accordingly by firing. It's also important that you do not forget your formulas, not just the formula for blood pressure in the form of cardiac output times peripheral resistance, but don't forget your formula for cardiac output, which we can spell out as EDV minus ESV, which remember is the same thing as stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. And this is cardiac output, and to get blood pressure, we must multiply all of that still with our peripheral resistance. Very important formulas, very important flow chart, very important for you to understand <clears throat> how blood pressure is regulated in the body.